Let's settle for the details of the conversation now on Election 360. Like I indicated, we are starting our conversation today from the Volta region. One region, the opposition, NDC, comfortably wins almost every now and then. The governing New Patriotic Party, however, is determined to make some inroads there. Let's take you through the special numbers of the region, the constituencies, and the inroads the NPP is actually trying to make. For the first time, they've been able to win one seat in that region. Could that double, or could the NDC win back the Hohoi constituency in the Volta region? Eric Mao and I, my colleague, will be helping me do this conversation and analysis. Let's have this conversation right about now. Yes, uh, Eric, thank you for joining us again. So we are right, starting Martin. from... Uh, the Volta region, as we indicated. Today, the conversation is a broader look at the region. Maybe we'll later talk about the Sal constituency and what that could bring to the table in the broader perspective of things. But let's start from 96, when uh, we started putting this data together. All right, so what we're looking at is the Volta region's presidential votes since 96, what the trend has been and what it's looked like in terms of uh, the, the ebbs and flows in voter outcomes for the Volta region to be specific. Mm -hmm. As you've mentioned already, it is a stronghold of the opposition National Democratic Congress and one that they've always enjoyed some dominance over. But there are a lot of things that this data we're looking at, we're looking at seeks to suggest or seeks to, to tell us. And perhaps we want to start from a lot of areas really we can so start many areas from, to start but from. perhaps let's start from the 2000 elections or 2020 elections that's what uh, i wanted to say the 2020 elections to be specific which is the last election uh before this one which we're expecting mm. and the the numbers suggest that there is some decline in terms of the ndc's dominance in fact if you look at the 84.8 percent that they enjoyed from the total valid vote cast as against the NPP's 14.1%. It is the lowest mm. the NDC has chalked since 96. In fact, you can even go back to as far as 92 in the fourth Republican uh, constitution. And in terms of voting trends, mm. what, what this suggests. This uh, most definitely suggests that there is something in the works for the governing uh, new patriotic party in terms of what we've seen them do. And curiously enough, you mentioned the fact that they are seeking to be able to stake a claim in the region. In fact, we know that the flag bearer of the NPP, Dr. Mohamedou Baumi, has spent the last week in the Volta region. In fact, yes. that's the region where he's proclaimed very strongly that on the 9th of the 7th of uh, December, he will be declared, he the himself and the governing New Patriotic Party will be declared victorious yeah. come uh, December 7th, the 9th of December 7th, having won the elections. Mm. And it is significant wanting to make such a declaration in the stronghold of your main opposition. And so <laughs> that's just a starting point really for yeah. us, the 2020 elections and what it's uh, s suggested to point to us, yeah. a decline somewhat in, in the NDC's dominance mm. and then a gradual growth as well for the NPP in the Volta region, Martin. Yes, and uh, still talking about the activities, the political activities in the Volta region, like you indicated, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is there. He's been there for uh, almost four to five days. He's headed to the OT region. We'll come back to that later. But almost everywhere the NPP candidate has gone to, mm. the numbers that turn up were quite impressive for an opposition region, as we, we know it to be. Right. Also, we know that the NDC flag bearer has been there a number of times himself. Now, whenever John Mahama goes there, because it feels like home for him, it is expected that he should be able to tour all the 18 constituencies that they have. But that is practically he's, he's not, impossible. He's not been able to do and that. And hasn't been able to do that. And now he's asking that the last elections, like you indicated, they got just about 84%. He says that that's actually the lowest since Rawlings' time. Yeah. And because of that, they need to get back to the Rawlings numbers and is hoping that they can give the NDC plus 10% of this. He's targeting 94%. Just when he left and started other regions, the national chairman of the party is also uh, went to the region mm. and actually finished the other constituencies that John Mahama could not go to. Some chiefs 
in specific areas said that John Mahama, who was the flag bearer of the, the flag bearer of the NDC, did not come to them. Uh, but you know, so it's, it's they had issues enough. with it's him. It's not good enough for Certainly. them. So beyond all of those uh, on the ground concerns, I think that the NDC is aware that if we do not take pragmatic steps, we are likely to even decline further in our home region. Well, in terms of the, of the Rollins numbers that Mr. Mahama spoke about, in fact, it must be stated on record, that based on, on the numbers that we're seeing, that bar Rollins, who gave them possibly the highest, 94.9%. Was even in, higher in 92. Absolutely. When, 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 when it was just yes, Rollins. When it was, was just really the main man. Rollins, the main man. The highest ever since has been 94.9%. The only individual who's been able to get them close to the 90 percentile region has been John Mohammed. That's been in uh, 2012 as well. Mm. And so perhaps he's the man who can do it for them again. But outside of that, we saw Professor Evan Satamils as well do 90 90 percent for them mm. uh, in, in the 2004 elections. Here's what we're going to do. If we, if we look at this data right now, what it suggests is that when the NDC had the candidates or the flag bearer from the region, the party polled the highest ever in terms of, of votes from, from the voter region. That was 94.9%. In 2000, it dropped in the runoff as well. It increased slightly again. Mm. And then we saw somewhat an improvement and then it dropped again in 2008 when they, when they won, won the elections. Interestingly as well, in the runoff mm -hmm. in the 2008 elections, from that uh, initial decline, it declined further since 2004 where uh, they recorded 90% uh, voter turnout from, from the region. That dropped to 89.2% in 2008. And then in the runoff, they saw that decline further. Then John Mahama came, who was seeking to go 90% and beyond, uh, seeking to have 91.4% of the votes. It declined again in 2016, and then it went on the ascendancy again yeah. in, oh, if it further declined again in, in 2020. So what, what we've seen is that for every year, where it's looked like an election year where power is expected to change hands, what we've seen is that the NDC's dominance in the voter region dwindles. And I'll highlight them for you right now. In 2000, when uh, there was a major switch or a major turn in a terms of administrations, mm. uh, from what they recorded previously, it dropped uh, quite significantly. Then in 2008, after recording uh, a 90% uh, portion of the vote, they saw it decline to 89.2%. was not so significant, but in the runoff, we saw that table downwards it didn't dip, again. Yes. And then in 2012, that number went up again. And then in 2016, it dropped further to 87.7%. By this analysis, you can make an argument that they will struggle even if anything is to go by, and the numbers that we've seen uh, with the vice president and the NPP flag bearer and the, the numbers and the crowd he continues to pull, yeah. there could be a challenge on the hands of the NDC in being able to have the voter, the large voter share that they are seeking in the voter region mm. turn up for them. Because this trend where in every election, after every eight-year election cycle where we've seen power change hands, the numbers that they enjoy in the voter region mm. sees a somewhat uh, marginal decline. Mm. That is an argument that could be made for 2024 as well, Martin. That's a good point you make. Also, like you indicated, in election years that power changes hands, the numbers of the NPP also go up when NDC is declining. Absolutely. So you indicated so in 2000, for In 2000, instance, it went up from 4.8 to 6. Then, because of the runoff, I mean, it, it was further. surprising that many people within the Volta region thought that it, it's clearly going in the direction of the NPP. So then they supported and then increased the number. For, and that's a significant increase from about 3.8%. Because a 6.4 percentage increase. Almost 4, 4 points percentage increase. Points percentage increase that's actually. a fair amount to talk about. Now, in 2004, the, I think the Volta region actually watches and baits when it is incumbency that is seeking re-election. They either don't turn up at all or just sit back. 
But so and again, so in 2000, 2000 uh, runoff, they increased the number for the NPP because it looks as though nationally it was swinging it was to the swinging, camp of the swinging, NPP. Swinging. That, that, that then it a lot declined more significantly in 2004, and then 2008 it went further down. However, the runoff changed things for them, and here it went up because that was when John. Evan Sata Mills was gaining power. So again, another change of government, the numbers shot up from well, here to declined. here. So the NDC votes actually declined, although uh, John Evan Sata Mills was won winning. The, won, won the elections Was eventually. winning the election. And that's actually a very surprising thing. We probably need to get to find out why this happened, because you would have thought that if this analogy was anything to go by, where we know a new government was coming, so naturally the numbers should go up, the government that won the day, the NDC, had a decline. Fast forward to 2016. The NPP's numbers went up fairly reasonably because in 2012, uh, when NDC won, it dropped. It dropped. And again, we are sure that the NDC won the 2012 because of um, sympathy votes that many have alluded to that John Mahama got after the demise of uh, John Evans Satano. So right. whereas the NDC shot the closest to the 90% mark you, indicate, you indicated, the NPP dropped to about 7.4%. In 2016, NPP won the national election. And then their and votes... their votes spiraled to 10%. That's the second, no, the third highest vote percentage they've got in the Volta region because they had 13%, which was the highest, 309 and then they have 10.8 in 2000, John uh, Jekum Kufo and Akufuado. So anytime the NPP is coming into power, they are able to claw above 10%. And, and, and from that analysis, we were expecting a downward trend in terms of uh, the numbers going down again for the NPP. But it didn't yeah. do so. It's been an increase from the 2016 elections uh, to 14.1 percent, whilst the decline for the NDC has continued. Now, there's an interesting uh, bit we want to add to to this in terms of uh, what to expect, and has to do with the the voter turnout. But another thing, perhaps lastly, of of significance that we need to notice that. The Volta region, yesterday we did a bit of analysis of looking at the, the larger basket regions yes. and then the smaller basket regions with 600,000 and less. The Volta region happens to be within that bracket which we didn't talk about. Mm. Voters or regions with registered voters between 700,000 and then 1.2 1. 1. 1. 2 million. They mm. fall within that bracket where they have more than a million votes. Now it's interesting to, to, to bring to the attention that this is a region that's been split. Yes. So from the 96 that we've seen and with the analysis that we've done up until this point, this is a region that's been split as at 2020. And before then, the, the regional registered votes continue to hover around 1.2 million and the likes. But after the split, the voter region has a million votes. Mm. Before there is the OT region as well, right. which also traditionally votes the NDC. NDC. Yeah. And so, in terms of what the NDC should be looking at in terms of securing uh, their World Bank, perhaps doing uh, themselves a world of good by improving their numbers while also having OT region in the basket, mm. it could prove substantial in dealing with the excess or the surplus votes from the Ashanti region, mm. which we've been speaking about since yesterday. Now, this is what I mentioned having to do with the voter turnout of the region since 96. Yeah. And this contributes to the ebbs and flows that we've been recording uh, in, in the election cycles and power changing hands. And so from the... From the 63.7% voter turnout in the Volta region for the 92 elections, that increased to 82.5% uh, mm -hmm. in the 96 elections. Okay. Now, when power changed hands in 2000, in 2000 look at it here. This was when the, the, the NDC's share of the votes declined, well, yes. as, as we've been, we've been walking mm. uh, viewers through. The voter turnout for the voter region declined massively, 59.9% mm. in the voter region, which saw uh, a decline for the NDC as well in terms of votes. Yeah. In 2008 as well, when power change hands, this time to them as well, 
was another decline. decline in votes as well. Mm. And then lastly, in 2016, after they had been in power and they eventually lost that election, no runoff, yet again, another decline in mm. terms of voter turnout. Yes. And so with another election cycle up on our hands with all of the analysis suggesting it could be an opportunity for power to change hands again, what this suggests is if the trend remains the same, we could possibly be seeing another low voter turnout, which will not argue well for the NDC in Certainly. terms of their, their baskets and yeah. the expectation they are having and wanting to win power and win it uh, via a one-touch victory. And it's interesting to pay particular attention to 2016 because in 2016, there was massive voter apathy. Mm. Uh, we mentioned yesterday that the people of the Volta region at some point, I mean, general perception was that because the NDC thought that they were a world bank and that they could bank on them any day, some were even calling them the Volta region, not Volta region, the Volta region. As they just go out and vote, and for, the vote for the NDC. And had accused the then government of not helping in terms of infrastructure and the concerns they had. They were not getting any government assistance. So they actually just didn't turn up at all or the few that went out to vote, vote spoiled the ballot, you know. So in the total number of pe persons who attend out to vote, this is quite signi significant. 60% of the total numbers that were counted in the Volta region turned out uh, were in the negative or had not voted at all. And it affected the NDC's numbers. So we know that the NDC now has increased its activities in the region mm -hmm. and increased voter education as well. So whereas they are asking the people to come out in their numbers and vote, they are also teaching them the right way to vote and what you do, how to even fold the paper. There's a major story on that we'll bring later, but this is an issue that across the country, maybe the National uh, Commission on Civic Education, the NCC needs to look at voter education so we can at least decline the total number of uh, spoiled ballots, spoiled ballots. Uh, you know, which is a concern that they've been raising in the last uh, few years. Absolutely. And so it says the, 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 the second worst in terms of turnout for, 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 the, for the NDC. And so it raises significant concern. And again, back to the point about the trends and what we're seeing in relation to the fact that if the trend remains the same, then we're headed towards yet again mm. a decline in, yeah. in votes for, for the NDC. There's just one last bit, perhaps, having to do with the OT region, which yeah. uh, I want to bring to you, because the OT region is, is important Should based, uh, yes, based on, on, on one particular point, having to do with what we've seen being the NDC's uh, dominance in, in the Volta region since 19 since 96, and then what, what, what we're seeing. And so this is the, the, the OT region, uh, which used to be a part of, a part of the Volta region. Yeah. And let's try and get an understanding of what, what we're seeing right now on, on the screen. And so this is the presidential votes trend as well for, for the OT region. Mm. Has always voted NDC, will continue to vote NDC, but yet like that. again, we're continuing to see the NPP gain grounds mm. in what has been seen as natural strongholds of, of the opposition NDC. And so from 96, where we saw 91.1% uh, result or, or, or votes go in favor of the, of the NDC, NDC were well, dropping to as low as 62.8%. And that actually is the lowest. Mm. And since 2012, there's been that general trend of a downward Down. spiral, whilst for the governing New Patriotic Party, it's been an upward trend yeah. in terms of the, the numbers that they are enjoying. And so mm. these and more is why we're seeing a lot of the political activity in the Volta region. In fact, you mentioned Johnson Asiedu Nketiah going back to the Volta region, mm. seeking to mop up on constituencies um, that John Mahama couldn't, couldn't visit. Mm. One thing he said clearly was that the Volta region needs to come out in their numbers to be able to ensure that the NDC wins the election. In fact, mm. on social media, based on what we've seen yesterday, there are those who are making the argument that if the, NDC, if the NPP should get about 10% in the Volta region, then they are headed towards a significant milestone mm. in, in winning this election. And so 
This and more is why perhaps the NDC should be really yeah. doing everything they can to ensure that they, they, win, they win in the Volta region and the OT region and win comfortably, Martin. And uh, it's good to also mention that uh, as, as the numbers stand from 2012, 2016 to 2020, the NPP seems to be growing gradually in the OT region specifically. And talking about the OT region, we are told that um, the NPP's flag bearer, that is uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, is headed to the region now, and again, primarily, to ensure that they actually scuttle whatever inroads that the NDC has or the stronghold. They try and break it down and get to the hearts and minds of the people. Daniel Opoku is a man who's following um, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's campaign and uh, will join us in the GIFI. So what you're seeing on your screen now are the people who turned up to meet Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the NPP candidate, in the stronghold of the NDC. And it's actually um, something noteworthy because you wouldn't have expected people like which else and I've actually just uh, also followed the a press conference that the NPP held there trying to disabuse the minds of the people in the Volta region that look we have voted for the NDC all these years but we have seen very little on their side however they are promising the NPP will do more for them Daniel Opoku has joined us on phone for a quick chat Daniel thank you for your time so wh where exactly are you I'm guessing you know where exactly you are because you are in transition to the OT region, but where exactly are you? What are the expectations from the campaign of uh, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia? Hello, Daniel. All right, so we are trying to get um, a firm connection to Daniel Apoku, who is following Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's campaign. And what we've been doing here, and I'm sure many of you in the Volta region and OT region, you're also watching us. Do let us know what would inform your thinking when you go on, you go to the polls to vote on Jan December 7th. So I'm told Daniel Opoku has joined us now. Daniel, I was asking where exactly you were, because uh, uh, I'm guessing you are on your way to the OT region. But what is the itinerary of uh, Dr. Baumia? Right, and so, well, I'm told that because of the clarity in the line, we may have to truncate this conversation, but certainly do have a safe trip to the OT region. We'll be coming back to you subsequently to let us know what the key message for that region is and what uh, the reception will be like. Daniel Opoku embedded in the campaign trail of uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who is heading to the stronghold of the main opposition. Now, it's interesting to know why he's been there for over a week and actually going to the OT region again to campaign. And the numbers we've brought to you so far have just tried to paint a picture for you how the people in the region have voted and what the expectations are going into December 7, 2024. We'll have to leave it here for now. Take a quick break. When we return, we'll be doing other very interesting analysis that you might want to be a part of. Thank you very much, uh, Eric Marnag, better helping us crunch the numbers here on Election 360. Stay with us. There is more after this.